Well, it is still not clear when a major amount of oil from the Gulf uh, will, will actually reach shore and where it's going to reach uh, shore. The slick is actually smaller than it was last week. The most recent satellite images show it now covers about 2,000 square miles. Strong waves may push some of the oil underwater. Tonight, the question is, where is all the oil heading? Let's dig deeper now. Rob Marciano, meteorologist Rob Marciano, joins me from Gulfport, Mississippi. Rob, you went up in a plane today, saw for yourself, saw for yourself how this oil is spreading. What did it look like? Well, the first thing we saw, Anderson, when we took off were the expanse of sandy beaches that, they, that go unprotected. We did see, did see a few containment booms on some of the barrier islands just south of, of Gulfport, but we ran into oil about 30 miles south of the Mississippi coastline, the Chandelier Islands, Barrier Islands just east of, of New Orleans. And then we followed the trail farther south into the Gulf, where ironically a, a river of oil was surrounding a whole cluster of oil rigs. I mean, the, the oil rigs that were there to drill thousands of feet deep to try to extract the oil, well, it's there floating around them in, uh, in this bad accident. Uh, on, on, a, on a good note, we did fly over the Mississippi Delta. We did not see any oil along the shorelines of the Mississippi Delta. But when you looked south and east, the expanse all the way to horizon bef before the bad weather turned us around, uh, you could see the oil sheen and slick and the heavy crude for as far as the eye could see. And, and the bad weather, I know, has broken up a lot of the, the containment devices that, that were put in place. Where is the oil heading? I mean, that's really the bottom line. Well, the past three days, it's been we've had that strong wind out of the south, and that is what got everybody so nervous because that was moving the oil farther to the north. Well, now in the next couple of days, the winds are going to be light, so it's just going to be drifting around. I don't think it's going to make landfall, so to speak, over the next couple of days. Beyond that, it may be you know there is a chance it gets picked up by the loop current in the Gulf, maybe even gets pulled around uh, you know the southern tip of Florida. That's that's a long shot, but it's entirely possible. Uh, beyond the next two or three days, Anderson, it's really anybody's guess what's going to happen. With that sheen of oil in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, Rob Marciano from Gulfport. Rob, thanks very much. The ruptured well is dumping more than 200,000 gallons of oil a day into the Gulf of Mexico. Stopping that flow is more than daunting. It's really never been done before at this kind of depth. Tom Foreman has been tracking the efforts to try to find a solution. Tom? Hey, Anderson. This is our first best look at the best hope for stopping those fountains of oil gushing into the Gulf of Mexico. This is a giant device being constructed in Port Fouchon, Louisiana. Here's part of it down here. It's a big sort of a box like this. And then here is the other part of it up here, which sits on top. You can see it's a cone sort of like this. You put those two together and you have, as I said, probably the best hope that we have right now for doing something about this. And this is how it's going to work. It looks very much like I expected it to based on conversations I had with scientists last week. And once assembled, this big box and cone will sort of sit together like this. Now, what they're going to do with this is take it down into this area. This weighs about 100 tons, it's 40 feet tall and 50 feet uh, 15 feet wide, about 40 feet tall, and this is in effect a giant underwater vacuum head. Let's look down in this deep, dark area a mile down to see what it's dealing with. This is like the rig about 1,500 feet away from the well head. We put it in the back, small as if it's off in the distance. And we have three big leaks here. One near this thing here, which is supposed to be the blowout preventer. This thing has not worked. They've not been able to turn it on, so that's where the biggest leak is, and they have two smaller ones. Here's the idea. They bring this device in here, and they bring it down slowly. The idea being that if they can, they will slowly bring it down above this well and completely cover over that spill. Then, with this sitting up on top, it's obviously not to scale here because of the size of the water, they then hook a pipe to the top here. They'll always have, already have one in place. And with that, they'll be able to run a hose up from the top of this and that hose will go up to the top where it will feed into a barge and pump all that oil and water out. That's the idea. The pressure of this oil naturally wants to rise to the surface, so it should be able to do it themselves, but they can't just cap it off because there's too much pressure. So what they want to do is put this in, embed it in the Gulf floor, anchor it there, and then let it siphon this up to the barge on the surface, Anders. Well, I mean, that's obviously difficult to do at that kind of depth. Um, you're also dealing with, you know, submersible, you know, I guess su submarines, or, which are remote controlled. Um, what about the other leaks? I mean, that's just for that one leak. That is just for that one. They're trying to build some smaller ones for the smaller leaks over here. But this is the big priority because they believe if this works, and you're right, it is going to be tricky because you're a mile down, it's never been done this deep, that will stop 85% of the flow. That is the belief. 
Naturally, as I said, oil wants to rise. They may need some pumps to help it along, but they think that basic chemistry will keep it flowing and that will solve the problem. We'll just have to see, Anderson. Yeah, I mean, it still could take, my understanding was it still could take a, a week and, and it's not a permanent fix. There's also a relief well they're drilling. What is that? Yeah, that's a very good point, Anderson. Even if this does work, let's say that all of this is gone and this is busy down here pumping this away and somehow we've managed to contain these, you really haven't solved the problem. That's why they brought another rig in over here. What this other rig is going to do is it's going to another drilling line down here and they're going to try to drill down here into the old well. Now, the scientists I've talked to about this said this is really like threading the needle from a mile away down here to interrupt this. But if they do it, then they have the capability of either tapping that well or putting concrete in here and basically cutting off all this oil altogether. That's a more permanent solution. This is just something to get by now and maybe, maybe, maybe could be in place before the week is out. That would be a big step in the yeah. right direction, Anderson. Be huge. All right, Tom, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for the explanation. Coming up next.